Hi, I'm Maggie. Hi, I'm Kenta. And I'm at American Hakko, hanging out with Kenta, seeing if he wants to make some stained glass art using Hakko products. really excited for you to be here and to teach me yeah. the process. Well, thanks for having me. Um, I know it can kind of seem overwhelming because there are a lot of tools on this table, but um, I promise you all of them are necessary for making stained glass. Mm. But once we kind of break down what you need for each step, um, it won't seem so overwhelming. So would you like to make some stained glass art? Yes, I would. Okay, let's get started. All right. So Maggie, what's the yeah. very first thing I need to do to get started? Okay, to get started, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to want to come up with a pattern. Okay. Um, there are great resources online for downloading free patterns. Mm -hmm. And if you don't feel like using a free pattern, mm -hmm. uh, you can always draw your own pattern, which is exciting. So I'll definitely use already existing. Pattern. Oh, you're gonna use a free <laughs> pattern. <laughs> it's not that hard, it's not hard at all. It's not hard at all. So um, to, draw a pattern, and I use a different method than those most artists. I use uh, tracing paper to draw my patterns on okay. and cut out my designs. Um, and that was just a method I tried when I started out and I've stuck to it. So um, I use this very thin tracing paper okay. and um, to I will just take a pencil mm -hmm. and I like to use my um, straight edge yeah, ruler. Straight edge. Yep, my straight edge ruler and I'll either think of a pattern in my head or look to a picture as kind of an idea, and then I will draw it out on my tracing paper. And the point of sort of drawing your pattern out is you're going to duplicate this pattern because you're going to use this to cut out the glass uh -huh. as well as sort of have a guide um, while you make the project. So um, I took the liberty of drawing out this little honeycomb pattern you can kind of see. Um, and that's sort of the pattern that we're going to work on today. Um, once you sort of have a pattern that mm -hmm. you like and um, you say, hey, I would like to turn this into glass, yeah. um, from there, we're going to want to make a copy of that pattern. Um, and the reason we do that is we want to be able to take little pieces of the pattern that are, and I cut this out of um, my tracing paper, um, but we're going to glue them to our glass and we're going to use these little tracing paper pieces to cut. Um, the actual glass. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then we'll take those um, those cut pieces of glass and we'll place them into our guide and make mm -hmm. sure they fit. And if they don't, then we will um, grind them down and make them fit like a puzzle. Yeah. With that, I will usually use a kid's glue stick. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter what brand, they, they're they all kind of uh, interchangeable, but. Um, because the tracing paper is so, so thin, mm -hmm. um, I will glue, take some glue. It's purple. Yeah, it is purple. It, come, it turns purple again once you put it um, under the grinder too. Oh, You're really? like, oh, it's purple. <laughs> but then you'll stick that so tracing paper piece. Stick it on yeah, there. go for it. Yeah. Anyway? Yeah. Ideally, it's best to have it match up to the corners, which you kind of already did that. Um, yeah. And so, that tracing paper piece is all kind of stuck down. It's covered in glue. Oh. So after I place this pattern onto my glass, um, pencil, sharpie? No, you Where's don't this? have to. The, the pattern piece serves as, serves as your guide to cut it out. Well. Exactly, so that kind of jumps us into our next step, which is yeah. um, glass for? cutting. Yeah, so um, there's quite a few different things that you will, tools that will you will use for cutting glass. Um, I'll just grab some of them here from the big stack of glass uh, tools that I have. But your biggest uh, friend is going to be your glass cutter. Yeah, it's not sharp. There's a little tiny wheel on the very tip of it. It's covered in oil here. Um, it's not sharp, you can, yeah, you can feel it yourself. If anything just makes a mess on your finger, but um, <laughs> the oil helps lubricate it against the glass as you roll it along. Mm. Um, part of cutting glass is you're making an impurity on the surface of the glass, and when you go to break it with a set of pliers, um, it will ideally follow that impurity in the glass and break along oh. that line. 
yeah. So um, we, I have a little, I like to keep my um, oil in just a little cotton ball for dipping, just to make it not messy. Sometimes um, oil will leak in my cutter. And so um, from there, we're going to cut out our piece. I'm going to kind of stand up to do this to use my body weight, but um, there are a couple ways to cut. Um, you can make curved lines, you can make straight lines, but in this case, we're going to follow some straight lines. Yeah, and so I want to start on the very edge of my glass piece as close as I can. I wanna keep my um, cutter at about 90 degrees, and I like to use my thumb here in the back as a guide. And I lightly push, I can use a little bit of my body weight, and then listen, if you can listen closely, I'll try to take this tape off. If you can listen closely, you'll oh, yeah. hear that magic sound, yeah. and try to not let it fall off the side too much. And so, you ever so slightly, I don't know if you can see the score line, I but can you can see a little bit of that oil on there, and that helps you kind of figure out where to break it. I'm gonna take my running pliers, and it's got a nice little guideline right here. Right. And I'm gonna make sure that guideline lands up, uh, lines up perfectly with um, the score line I made. And I'm gonna press gently and it'll break. I know it's like magic. <laughs> it's, it's not as, the idea of cutting glass seems kind of scary and dangerous and it's not, right. it's very clean and easy for the most part. It's sometimes not easy, but um, you know, it's it's a lot simpler and cleaner than you think it would be. Yes, it is. I was imagining you have to like like go back saw and it forth. or yeah. yeah. And actually, you should never go back or back and forth on this. This just, glass cutter, you always want to just follow where that glass cutter takes you because it ends up hurting the blade. Actually, if you go back and forth, that. yep. You only need kind of one run over it. So um, what we'll do that with every edge. We'll cut every edge of this piece. And if, would you like to give it a try? Here. And you wanna make sure it's at about 90 degrees. Yep, that's perfect. That's great. So I was gonna ask you. Yeah. Um, I noticed that you went, you didn't stop at the edge of the honeycomb. You went yep. all the way through to the edge of the glass. Yes. Is that a must? It is a must. You don't want to stop in the middle. Um, because you'll eventually come back and break that other that other piece off but glass wants to follow for the most part in a straight line and so <laughs> i know it's it's oddly satisfying they're grossing pliers so this is a great chance to use your grossing pliers um, and then the tip to using these are you're going to look to that score line again these are great for those smaller pieces where these big running pliers are might be too bulky mm -hmm. but you're going to look at it almost at the side like an alligator there's a curved point on the bottom mm -hmm. and the flat part at the top okay. you're going to make sure that your thumb mm -hmm. and these pliers line up together and i always call it pushing up but some other people see it as pushing down but okay. just gently break upwards. So you can try that other that other edge. That's the rough outline of a piece. And so <laughs> that kind of moves us to our next phase. So you can take a look at your piece and I have a piece here that I did. Um, and they're kind of jagged and rough and they're not perfect to that paper guide that we made. Mm -hmm. And that's okay, that's not a problem. Um, for these smaller copper foil sun catchers, that, that happens. So um, from there, what we'll do is we'll want to use our handy grinder, which is over here. Mm -hmm. Piece here is a bit on the jagged side. It's not a perfect honeycomb shape. So what we're going to do is use this little handy water grinder right here to grind down those sharp jagged edges. I'm gonna turn on my switch and you can see that there's a little bit of water spurting there and I'm going to lightly touch these shiny sharp edges to that grinder. And I'll smooth it down. My goal is to match 
the glass to that pattern piece so it will fit perfectly in my guide. And so once I'm done, it will be a lot smoother. So you have much, a much more honeycomb looking piece that's not as sharp. So after we've grinded our pieces and they're nice and beautifully smooth mm -hmm. and they fit perfectly into our pattern, you know, right. we'll want to, um, and it, this piece doesn't fit perfectly right here, but just as an example, what you'll do once you've finished grinding is you'll check to make sure all your pieces fit. Once they look good, you'll clean them off um, just with some warm water and scrub it with a sponge, the edges, just to make sure all the glass dust is off, is off and um, they're ready to be foiled because the, a big piece is when we jump into our next step, which is foiling. Yes. We're going to want our pieces to be clean and um, we want the tape to stick very oh, well. So that's uh, why you clean it off. Exactly. It's going to be very important when we go to solder um, because solder, the lead doesn't stick to the glass directly, which is kind of crazy and surprising, but it actually binds to the tape. So having that nice, clean, strong tape is going to be crucial for us to have a, a stable and uh, solid project. Okay. So this is my copper tape. It's shiny, it's pretty, it's very thin. You'll see it has a black back to it. If I can get it apart. And you can touch it, it's sticky. Adhesive on one side. Exactly. Pop on the other. Exactly. So it's thin, and this is where having crafty little hands comes, uh, comes handy. So we're going to take this copper tape, and we want to wrap this little glass piece okay. in that copper tape. So I always like to start in the middle of an edge and when you start, it's be a little tricky to show, but I want to place that glass right in the center. In the middle. And forgive me, because this side is very smooth, so our tape might not take very well, but it almost sits in the center. And so we'll carefully use our finger and make sure we're going to wrap every edge, and you really want both sides to be even as you wrap. And just going around the exactly. The I'm going around the entire piece. So depending on like uh, the thickness of the glass that you're working on. Exactly. Different, um, there are different foil sizes. Um, yeah, there's different foil sizes, and for the most part, seven thirty seconds is going to be the size you want to stick to because uh, generally your glass will fall in that range where the foil will fit perfectly um, with the stained glass. Sometimes you'll have bigger glass, sometimes you'll have smaller glass, and you can always purchase uh, tape mm -hmm. that's thicker, but for the most part, 730 seconds will do the trick. So my, tape's my piece is wrapped in tape. I'm going to now press down the tape, and I'm going to carefully go around the edge and it's all pressed down smoothly, but you can see there's still kind of points that are a little rippled, need to be smoothed out. I, I like to touch the, the pieces, kind of to smooth those pointy parts out first, kind of use the, a flat surface. And then I'm gonna use this handy tool called a FID. What is that? I know it looks kind of <laughs> weird, but it's, it's a FID, and it's, you can also use a popsicle stick too, if you don't wanna use a FID. Um, but pretty much it's a flat, it's a tool that's gonna help flatten your surface. So um, when you start smoothing down that copper tape, you're going to start with the edges and just lightly press. And what portion of the fit you use is, is up to you. Um, you can use the edge here, 
you know, I, I sometimes like to use the back, but it, I, my trick is I always go around the edges with the fid first and smooth them down. You want to go around every edge. Does that actually make a big difference, um, smoothing out the edges and not smoothing out the edges? Absolutely. The yeah, Saturn? absolutely. It does because going back to what I was saying before, it's super crucial for your pieces to be um, strongly taped together because this is what your lead is sticking to. So if this is loose, once you go to do that soldering, the heat will cause the tape to peel up or the solder won't stick well to it. So um, if you put the time in to, it, to put attention to every piece and make sure it's strong and it's well taped down, your project it will be better in the end. Yeah, yeah. So um, from there, after you smooth the outside edges, you're gonna wanna smooth the inside edges. So it takes a little bit of work doing every piece, but you'll wanna do one side, and just make sure all those edges look nice and smooth. And you can kinda see once I finish that they're a lot shinier and smoother. Yeah. And then I'll flip over to the back side, and this side's a little bit more bumpy. Because of the, the glass. Exactly because of the texture on the back of that glass. And then you've got a nice shiny foiled piece and it's ready for solder. Yeah, best part, which is soldering. <laughs> and this is where Hako comes to shine. Um, they've got some of the best products and I'm really excited that we get to use them today to make some stained glass art. So um, number one, safety is huge during this step. Um, as you can see, we've got these fancy gloves on and some goggles to protect our eyes. Um, beyond just what we wear, I also like to use a smoke absorber. Mm -hmm. um, the Hako FA400 is awesome. It does a great job pulling fumes. Um, you know, as, as you work, you're going to have fumes from this flux. Oh. That happens, the smoke absorber is going to pull those fumes away. It's just better you don't breathe them. Um, so the smoke absorber is great, and then we've got this fantastic Paco 633 holder, as well as the 599B um, tip cleaner, which will be instrumental in keeping our soldering nice and flawless. So, would you like to try soldering Absolutely. out? Absolutely. Okay. So, I'm going to show you something. Um, before I put flux on the project, so you can kind of see wow. the roll of flux. That is our lead. It's kind of heavy, it's, but it's kind of bendy if you want to give it a, a feel. Okay. So before I get started, I like to keep my iron on 460. 460. Just wanted to check it was on 460. 460. Um, a big thing before you go to touch your iron to your project is you want to clean the tip. So in this tip cleaner you've gotten you've got this um brass, brass right wire. brass wire sorry <laughs> you've got so when you go to clean this tip you have brass wire and it's important to clean that tip and make it nice and shiny that's going to pick up the lead the best if you have a dirty tip it's not going to melt the lead well and nice. it's not going to keep it smooth and rolling so with that with a clean tip a hot iron and I've got lead in hand. I'm going to show you what happens when you don't put flux on your project. See that? The it doesn't really stick that well. Right. It's kind of blobby. Right. It doesn't run smoothly. So I'm going to use some flux. I personally like to just put it directly on the brush and I'm going to liberally oh. paint it. Yep, on my project. Thing, I huh? know, yeah. <laughs> you want to get every little nook and cranny. And so when I'm going to do this, I am going to clean my tip again on my iron and then watch what it does when I touch it. It picks up that lead and it just rolls it smoothly. It's the same with the uh, electronics. Yeah. Flux helps. So what I want to do when I am starting to tin my project is I want to put a nice little thin layer of lead over the entire thing mm. because once I go back to do a solder bead, mm. uh, it will kind of it kind of lays a foundation so the lead won't melt through the little cracks. Oh. 
and I will hand this iron over to you to try it. But I'm just putting a thin little, you can just barely touch the edges. The lead will just naturally follow along that copper tape because it likes it. And I'll clean this for you and then give you a try. Can't absolutely, absolutely. So you've got your pan, your fan picking up those fumes. And as you, as you tin, you can touch that lead against the back of your iron. There you go. And it will, it will way. melt it. There you, exactly. You're a natural. And you'll want to make sure that there's no copper showing on your piece. Even the outer edges. Even the outer edges as well. Yep. So you've tinned the out, tinned one side of it. You want to put the iron back. And I personally think this is the most exciting point part because this is the point where you get to kind of see what your project looks like in the light. So I ever so carefully lift the tape off. This is just painter's tape. It doesn't leave any residue. Thank you. It doesn't leave any residue at all. And this is sort of your first chance to see what it'll look like in the sun. Mm. And there's kind of your first look of what it will look like in the light. So I think this part, this part is most exciting for artists because they get to, it's it's your first look at what colors you chose. But after you get that look, you've got a lot of work ahead of you. So um, we'll have to flux and tin the whole backside, which I can do. Or you can if you wanted to keep if you wanted to keep trying it. No. But I wanted to be able to show you how to Absolutely. um how to bead because that's the bead. next that's the next big big step. So I'm just kind of quickly going over. This is me tinning tinning my pieces. Moving the solder. Oh, thank you for that. And then just holding those edges and making sure that there's no copper left. And we'll want to pick it up too and get the uh, outside edges as well. Yeah, there's a lot of edges to remember as you as you go. It's fun. It is fun. You know, if you put on some headphones, listen to some music, it's kind of it's kind of relaxing. So at that point I'll kind of carefully pick up the edges and same thing, you're just Gonna lightly kind of touch your iron. It's okay. You'll see the and there's that mat coming in. Yeah, it saves your disc. <laughs> it does. Probably have some droplets, some excess. And I'm just getting all those edges. There's a little bit of excess, and you can just blood's kind of funky. You can just pile it all kind of in a blob. Exactly. So I'm going to let this piece cool for a moment so it doesn't crack. But you can look at it so far. Oh, I guess there's a little left. Yeah, go for it. Now you're going to be hooked. Yes. I'm afraid I am. Okay. Yeah. So. We're halfway through soldering. What we're going to do is it's important we don't overheat the glass because mm. if you do, it'll crack. And unfortunately, you'll have to take the piece apart and add another new piece in. And it can be kind of a headache, but a sure. great way to avoid that is to just wait, even though it's hard to wait sometimes. But um, as soon as this piece cools down a little bit more, we are going to add this nice little hook that will eventually be this is my little homemade oh, kind of hook. jump ring. Yep, I made this with some um, tinned copper wire. It's a little homemade jump ring. And I'm going to solder that down one of these joints. Oh, okay. And I can show you how to do that. Yes, please, yes, please. But yeah, let's just wait a, one moment. It's pretty close to being cooled because it's a nice, um, it's a uh, small piece so the heat leaves quickly. But yeah, before. You, do you like, can you blow with the fan to make that process? No, it's not. From, from my understanding, you want it to, you don't want to 
have it force it to cool down quicker because I think that would cause the glass to break. Kind of like, you know, how glass blowers put it in a, and I don't want to say the word wrong, an annealer where it's kind of like slowly brings the temperature down. I think that is preferred to blowing on a, you know, having a fan blow on it because hot and cold may cause it to crack. So our piece is feeling, our piece is feeling good. It's not too hot to the touch. I'm gonna go ahead and add this little jump ring here. Um, you know, you don't have three hands, but um, with two hands, I will take, I'll clean my soldering iron, my 601. I like to take the back of my flux brush to help me hold it kind of steady. And I'll take a little bit of solder and I will just hold and touch And there we go. It's now this is attached. You can kind of see I've done a little bead of solder. Mm -hmm. I wait for it to cool. And then I will come in and put a little bit more. And there we go. You've got your jump ring attached. And we'll do the backside when we flip it over. We don't want to do it yet because part of having a nice bead on all the, um, between all like, the um, little crevices, mm -hmm. um, you want to keep the project as flat as possible because it's like a have it's like working on a tilted table versus a flat table. Oh, if, okay. As long as you've got a flat space, it'll keep the it'll be easier for you to let as you work. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll kind of show you how I start to do a bead, and then I will pass it off to you to bead your project. So it's called beading. Beading, exactly. So you. You've got a clean tip. You've got a nice and shiny tip. I'm going to place it on the edge. Okay. Don't hold it too long or it'll melt through. And I'm going to lightly touch that lead and follow. Oh, oh and there it melted through. So that was just a little bit too hot. You can always start from over here. But you can pull it almost like a pen along that lead line. See it kind of bubble, and that's okay. So you're trying to give it extra strength. Exactly, and it's the style. It's style as well. Oh, so. But you can come back and lightly touch if there's any sort of bubbles in your work. Mm -hmm. And then once this is kind of cool, I can come in and sort of touch. And I like to keep the iron kind of flat, and I can come in and sort of add to it. Yeah. And slightly touch. And if it has ripples in it, I can just barely touch it. Would you like to give it a try? Yes. So start on, how about this edge right here and, and do this little outline. Here? Yes. There you go. Yeah. You got it. And it gets tough when you get towards the edge because it has a tendency to want to sort of fall off the side. And that's okay. The, the thing that's great about stained glass is aside from cracking, there's no mistake. So we can always wait for this to cool down and we can come back and give that line another go and pick off that extra lead that falls off the side. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just feel the project, make sure it's not too hot. All right. It's time consuming and there's a lot of tools involved, but it's a very rewarding process once you put all the work into the each little step yeah. and you've got a you know a beautiful piece of art you can hang from your window. It's yeah. a, I always say it's a true labor of love. It is. Well, I think just, you know, taking a pattern and drawing it up and then turning it into something that's yeah. tangible and, and physical and you can look at every day is it's just it's it's mm -hmm. neat. It's a different fun medium. So you got it. It's great. That's great. So I always, before I flip it over, I look, you know, see if there's any ripples, see if there's any joints that need to touch up. I would just barely touch your iron down in that little spot. You just don't want any other. Yep, that's perfect. And and do I need to do the? We'll we'll do that part at the okay. very end. It's very it's it's easy. So you've got your front side. You can see earlier, we had a little bit drip through the back. That's okay if you don't mind me showing you. I can show you kind of how to clean up if you have a side that you could have any uh, 
lead that drips through the back. You really can touch it and pull it nice and lightly. Yeah. And then I'll do the same thing that I did on the front. I kind of use my handy flux brush mm -hmm. and I'm gonna solder that little side down there. Nice, yeah. And if, if your lead line isn't perfect the first, like if it's more heavy on this side, we can always come back once it cools and add lead on to that. Yes, exactly, yep. But don't do it all up. Yeah, the more that you play around with the lead, the hotter it gets. And it just, it's important to, once it gets hot, to let it cool down because you can always come back and add on to it. It's better than not waiting and then having it crack. crack. Yeah, and that's way worse because what you'll have to do if it cracks is, you'll have to melt off all the lead and then carefully try and keep the, the non-cracked pieces intact. And then you have to go refoil it, clean it. It's just a nightmare, but it happens from time to time. Sometimes it just, you sometimes just get a crack or it just gets too hot or there was already an impurity in the glass and you know, it's it just was what it was. Now we're getting closer. How does that feel? Little hot, Little hot? still, yeah. But in the meantime, if you want, you can even uh, melt off some of these little um, nuggets on the edge oh, too. Just, just barely touch them and they should just drip off. I, I like to pick up my piece when I do it because the lead will naturally try and keep stuck to your sun catcher. So you can just, yep, pick it up off the ground. So we have finished soldering. Looks beautiful. You've got some nice lead lines here. No, none of the copper tape is showing anymore. So it's important now that flux that we used earlier to take it off of our piece. Oh, so okay. to use that, I have a little bit of, oops, sorry, I have a little bit of cleaner and I'm gonna spray it and I'm gonna spray the back side. And I like to just use a paper towel to kind of rub. And this is just gonna get that, that flux off and it's going to prevent um, white dust from forming, which just happens over time with lead, lead dust forms. And so the quick clean will keep it off and make it nice. So use my flux cleaner. It's nice and shiny, mm. but the best way to keep that shininess preserved, mm. we're going to use some wax. Wax. So I've got a buff on and a buff off cloth. <laughs> 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 buff on, buff off. <laughs> wax on, wax That's off. Soft. I'll take a look. Just a couple drops. You don't need a bunch. And I'm gonna take one side covered in wax. I'm gonna make sure to get that lead. And then I'm going to do the back side. Just a couple drops. More than a couple. That's okay. We just we wanna make sure that it's covered in wax. Mm -hmm. Wax on my handy wax cloth. So once the wax is all spread, mm -hmm. I'm gonna take a microfiber cloth okay. and I'm just gonna set it in the center and really get that all nice and shiny. Clean it, clean the wax off. It can get a little bit tricky in the corners. But this is the final piece that's really gonna make your project shine. There you can kind of see the lead cleans up nicely. It's nice yeah. and shiny. And just the final tip is you're gonna get to tie your string on your piece and then it's ready to be hung in your window. Oh, cool. Yeah. Ta -da. And that's how you make stained glass. Well, Kenta, I hope you enjoyed making stained glass today as much as I did. I absolutely loved it. Good. Well, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Thank you.